good to be here. It's good to be, I guess, anywhere at this point. <laughs> so how was your Christmas? I hope it was good. How was your Kwanzaa, your uh, um, Hanukkah? Or I hope it was good. I hope you spent lots of good time with family and friends and um, you're over all your shopping and now you can relax and calm down and get on with things. That's how I feel. In case you couldn't tell. Anyway, my name is Shelly Overton, and I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida. And we are here today to go over the astrology in the sky now, in the future, and talk about what's going to happen in the new year. What on earth is going to happen in 2016? It's a lot. <laughs> it's not, I wish I could say that there is going to be a relaxing year coming up, but um, I don't think we're going to get that probably for another decade. Anyway, um, I've been preparing for the show here for the last hour, and it's a big show because we're going over a lot of information, and yeah, there's there's a lot. It's one of those shows where, you know, there are a number of different ways I could give you the information, and for those of you who are studying astrology, um there's one way that I like to do it, which is do a chart for midnight, January 1st. I'm in Orlando, so this is to the Orlando time zone and uh, area on the planet. But, you know, I'm the astrologer, and so wherever I'm at, I suppose, is, you know, midnight, and that's the beginning of the year for me. Of course, everybody is in a different place in the world, so they all are experiencing slightly different energy at the new year but they are experiencing the planets pretty much where they are at in the sky um, with the exception I would say of like Australia um, because they celebrate and you know that side of the earth uh, the southern hemisphere is going to be experiencing a moon in a slightly different position from their perspective in their time but everything else will be pretty much uh, lined up with the similar signs so Anyway, I do it from midnight, Orlando, Eastern Time Zone. Then the other way you can do it is go through uh, the beginning of each solar month and go month by month through the zodiac. But this is the thing with astrology. There are infinite ways to define energy. And you can look at different ways of defining the energy. And wherever you are, that energy is reflecting you. So the thing about doing predictions, and I didn't mean this to be this kind of uh, dissertation on predictions, but wherever you are, your environment is reflecting back to you exactly what you need. So you are getting that particular reality or that reflection. So... I think it's a really cool idea uh, to ponder about. The planets are in a place where you are that reflects that. There are influences that are affecting us all. And so I will get on with that. And I'll kind of give you an overview um, of where the planets are first. And then we'll go through some of the signs and see how that interacts with each chart. And that way, if you know your sun sign, at least you'll have the basics for the coming year. And so um, New Year's Eve, I'm going to give you that. I think I'll give you a little bit more of that right away because that's pretty fascinating. So New Year's Eve, um, January 1st at 12 o'clock Eastern, it's going to be Aries on the horizon. So again, fresh new year, um, new energy coming in. And Uranus is right there in the first house. And now, so everybody in the world can't have Aries on the horizon. But um, actually, what would probably be even, and, and this is where I sometimes get, get bogged down trying to explain things, um, everyone in a different time zone will have a different chart for that time zone, and even, like I just said, the place. So probably 
precisely if you want to do a chart on your own, I would do it for the time zone and the place that the midnight timeline comes in first. And I think that's always, isn't that Australia? That timeline is, you know, the date changes on the other side of the world first. So that would be probably the most accurate for the world. But, um, you know, I find that for America, the sun rises in the east, and this is also Canada, of course, North America, rises in the east. And so midnight coming up on that continent, um, that's going to be pretty accurate for what we're going through. So um, so Uranus is in Aries, and it's direct, which is really awesome. I love Uranus direct. Just went direct on Christmas Day. And that means that now our ideas are flowing again, and we're able to take action and be in our truth. And it's definitely an energy of truthfulness and living in integrity. So it will be a year of living in integrity, even more so than you have already, and it's about entrepreneurship. Everything that is Uranian, which we just had a show last week about it, so if you want to re-listen to that show, you can get that information, but it is going to have a very strong independent energy this year, as it will probably next year, because Uranus will be direct next year as well, but next year it's going to be in a slightly different position, closer to the 20th degree, which brings it into um, the next energy. So it's Sagittarian, I believe, next year. But we'll get to that next year. We're not going to go there. <laughs> Don't digress. This is also what happens when Uranus goes direct in my chart because it's two degrees off of my sun, right on my Pluto and my Mercury, and then I start chasing my tail because I have so much stuff that I want to get out. Um, so we'll try and keep it reined in. So on New Year's, uh, 11 degrees Saturn in Sagittarius is moving into trine with Uranus, which means very strong independent energy, autonomy, moving, moving towards higher understanding, which the truthfulness, um, seeking out a spiritual truth is Sagittarius, and Uranus having to live in integrity. So integrity and truth are going to have a very strong um, connection next year. The disconnect is going to be with Pluto and Capricorn to a degree, where the sun is at 10 degrees Capricorn, Pluto is at 15 degrees Capricorn, and there is in conjunct to Saturn. So that means that there is um, there's a disconnect between how the energy wants to organize, the collective wants to organize, and other countries and other cultures. There is a clash going on between those two energies. So Pluto and Capricorn means the authoritarian energy, and Saturn and Sagittarius means, well, Saturn rules... Capricorn, so there's definitely uh, an energy going on with those, but um, and Saturn, I'm sorry, Saturn is the structure and how we come together and organize things, and Sagittarius is freedom and other cultures and spiritual knowledge, so you put the two together, and it's how do we organize those ideologies, again, immigration is going to be big, um, and it's going to be clamped down on somewhat by the Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto and Capricorn is direct, so it's moving towards understanding uh, that that authority nature, that desire and the structure of things, and wanting to make it more concrete. Something has to be concrete. And so Pluto and Capricorn, it's, Pluto is also looking for the mystery and looking for the hidden. So there could be more information coming out in government and what's going on with foreign affairs because the, that nature of pulling something out of the depths. And sun, what sun does is sun puts light on it. So bringing in the new year, there will be, um, and also sun, I should say, sun and Capricorn rule the midheaven naturally, which is fame. So government energy, and it's really interesting how um, in America, there's always, it always seems to be like the budget has to be balanced by the new year, and that's always the energy, and that's really Capricorn. And Pluto uh, is even more so. It's about taxes and, and the government and bureaucracy, things like that. But the sun is right there, as it is every time this year, but it is coming up on a conjunction with Pluto, and that's within five degrees. So the first five days of the new year, we're going to really feel this energy strongly, um, Again, organizing, organizing closets, getting rid of clutter. Always the New Year way, right? 
Mercury is at 29 Capricorn. So Mercury is the thoughtfulness that we uh, take into account and where our thoughts are. But it's at 29 Capricorn. Now, this is really an interesting degree for me because 29 is culmination, wrapping up, and ending things. So definitely we are thinking about letting things go. What are we going to move into? Because Aquarius is right there on the horizon. So actually, that's one thing I didn't... Well, maybe it is. I'm sorry. I'm I'm thinking out loud, <laughs> which is probably never a good thing when you have so much Aquarius and Mercury energy with me, because you know it just means that there's a lot of um, a lot of loose ends and uh, dead end streets. Okay, so Mercury goes. Well, this is another interesting thing. Mercury retrogrades on January 5th, so literally he gets into um, the other the Aquarius energy, and then he goes right back into Capricorn. And if you give me one second, I'm going to grab my book, which I wrongfully left on the other side of the room. Hang on. Okay, there we go. I can't believe I did that. (laughs) So, okay, so Mercury will get into Aquarius on the 2nd, and then he'll retrograde on the 5th and go right back into Capricorn on the 9th. So it's a very... It's kind of like you're moving into the new energy, you're feeling the strength, and then it goes, ah, psych. So what what that means, and this is really fascinating, is that in every day after a chart, it equals a year, okay? So this is our year. Now, if you're going nine days, that's just, it's, oh, now I'm getting myself into a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had a thought that didn't pan out. Um, what I was thinking of, okay, so as you go through a year, within the year, hours, that's what it is, sorry, hours become months, okay? So two hours into every single day, if you divide a day up, then that becomes a month. So in the year, you have, oh, I just want to tell you this, but I don't know if this is in over your head. Um, so when you progress a chart, this is a progression, one day is one year. If you want to find a more specific energy in that year, you divide it up into hours. So 24 hours in a day twenty equals two hours. Okay, you know what? I think I may just have to abandon this. <laughs> Only because it's just so involved. And I don't think it's really going to do us any good for the prediction show. So... If you want to know more about that, leave me a comment on my Facebook page and I will get into that more into progressions because it's just not going to be, it's not going to come out well for this show. So I apologize. Anyway, okay, so getting back to my Mercury and Capricorn, it just means that we're slowing down and we are thinking about all these issues of Capricorn, you know, how have things been organized? What is it that we wanted to accomplish? Can we let it go? Of course, it's right there wanting to have something new, but right out of the gate in the in the new year, it goes retrograde. And so now we're going to have to go back over this Capricorn energy again. So um, it's going to be a couple, about 10 weeks of Capricorn and so it's it's going on right now, and it has been going on. So we're almost halfway through, quite honestly. And so after the beginning of the new year, it will, let's see, I'm just going to tell you when Mercury went. Mercury went into Capricorn on the 10th of December. So basically everything that you've been thinking about during that the course of that time, all the things that come up, all the details, the um, structures of things, fears, definitely fear because Capricorn is all about the control over things and fears are what drive the control. So that will be there. We'll have a brief break for five days with Mercury and Aquarius and then it's going to go into Capricorn until uh, the 14th of February, which is Valentine's Day. So that is going to be really interesting. So really what we're doing is we're trying to wrap up some of the old energy around the structures that we've been dealing with in our lives, like all along. And so it's also career and it's bosses owning your own stuff. It's about responsibility and ownership for yourself. So, and it is about um, the structure of government and authority figures. I actually did a reading uh, this past month 
with someone who, in I actually there were a couple different readings about people who are working for companies reorganizing and um, getting merged into other companies. So we will see that. That's also something very strong about the beginning of the year and in the new year. And that also translates into our own charts, into restructuring our lives wherever Capricorn happens to fall. So, And I'll get to that. Um, a little later, and I know this is going to probably be a longer show about what's going on in the year, and we will get to calls if we have time, but I'm not going to make any promises. I would like to take at least one phone call before the end of the show, so hang on the phone lines if you're thinking of getting a reading. We'll just see where it goes, okay? So, um, okay, so then we have the Capricorn, and then uh, we've got Neptune at 7 Pisces, and it's in the 12th house, so it's really digging, again, you know, I go over these energies so much, and it's just subtle shifts and changes. Um, I got a question in the chat room, and I'm just going to address it real quick. Um, they asked when Venus is retrograde, unless someone else knows. I've got it written down, and it's going to be part of the rest of the show, so I will let you know. Uh, actually, I could just look at it. Hang on a second. It's so funny, because I think I do better not researching things in advance because it just I get bogged down by so much information sometimes but um now I'm I'm you know pretty sparkly things that's me so if you listen to the show you know once in a while I get like this I get kind of um I want to say skittish but it's not skittish it's um flaky <laughs> flaky is a good word so let's see I'll let you know when Venus goes retrograde Venus goes retrograde actually I think it was just retrograde not long ago. It doesn't go retrograde this year. It was just retrograde in October, I think. Oh, no, it was retrograde in August of last year. So it's not going to go retrograde in 2016. So there you go. Oh, unless it does it late in the year. Nope, not next year. Yay, isn't that awesome? Woohoo. So, um... Okay, so Neptune and Pisces still digging up the deeper stuff, uh, getting us a little bit, a little bit um, like this, actually, <laughs> a little flaky, a little dreamy, a little etheric, and we are. I'm telling you, by the next end of the next ten years, we will know Pisces because Neptune is bringing out the emotions, the etheric, etherical quality, and we are learning about that. So it's just going to continue on. Um, it is about the oceans. It's about water. And I think that, again, as Neptune continues through Pisces over the next decade, we are definitely going to be stronger and stronger about water, about drinking water, about how we treat our water, how we treat the oceans. And if you've noticed, I don't know if you noticed, this is really cool, the whales are coming in closer to shore. I just saw today that there was a humpback whale up in the in New England area, and a lighthouse, I think it was a harbor master, or yeah, I think it was a harbor master, took photos of it, and you can find it on the internet, but a humpback whale breaching for 45 minutes, which he was really close into the harbor, and I think it was up near Boston or Connecticut, I can't remember exactly where, but that happened, and I know that there have been a couple baby orcas spotted in Florida and Georgia, I think, too. So they're coming in, and we're starting to see them more. And so we're going to keep seeing this. I mean, I even read about a giant squid that was spotted. I mean, I just glanced at it today. But that kind of thing is going to be more prevalent as we go on for the next step. Okay, thank you, Japan. <laughs> Thanks in the chat room. Um, yeah, it, it's just the ocean is wanting to have a say. And we have to start paying closer attention. And Neptune is absolutely going to make sure that we do that. Okay. Um, Jupiter is in Virgo, and it will be in Virgo until September. So, unfortunately, what's left of it, so it went in in September of this year, and it's going to go retrograde for a good portion of that throughout the year. So, it will start right out of the gate on the 8th of January at 23 degrees Virgo, and will retrograde all the way till May 8th, and it'll be at 13 degrees Virgo. So a good portion of the time that he is going to be in Virgo is going to be retrograde. So it's going to be about expanding a deeper sense of one-on-one -on -one with ourselves, and because 
when a planet goes retrograde, it kind of flips how it behaves. So Jupiter direct in Virgo is very meticulous and wants to go, 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 wants to be in health, wants to take action. Retrograde means it's going to turn within. It may be holding back energy. You may have some more health issues come up. Um, you have to pay attention to what you're eating. You know, Earth energy, Jupiter and an Earth energy, it's about how we act upon ourselves, you know, in our body and what we take on, what we eat, how we are physically with exercise. So it's really kind of ironic if you think about it that we celebrate the new year and we make resolutions to lose weight, exercise, et cetera, et cetera. This is going to be a really strong year of that. Um, if you've set the resolution to exercise, you may already have had that come up in the past year. And if you've already made those resolutions, they will be good and strong. I think that this year it's going to be a little bit harder to keep them, but it will go deeper and you will really get a stronger sense of what it is that you need to change over the course of the first six months because of that Jupiter retrograde in Virgo. So um, that's also in trine to the Capricorn energy and Mercury will be trining Jupiter again when he retrogrades. He's already past that trine. Actually, I take it back. He's probably right on that trine or just past it because um, I'm looking at the January 1st chart and not today's chart. So let me just see real quick. 26th, so last Saturday, so th two days ago, three days ago, he was exactly in trine to Jupiter which means our thoughts are probably on <laughs> literally the 26th, so it was the day after Christmas, and we probably overate and thought, okay, now all that's over, all the stress of the holidays and being with family and friends, I can relax and start to think about my own health and my own well-being, which is what we're going to do when Mercury retrogrades and goes back into Capricorn. It's going to be the reorganizational month, okay? Yes, that happens every year, like the intentions are there because you have Sun and Capricorn, but this year we have Mercury and Capricorn backing it up and saying, okay, I need to really get down to the nitty gritty. So Mercury, of course, retrograde means that we're maybe not as confident in what it is we're doing to reinforce those boundaries, reinforce the the organizational side of things that the labels and the this goes here and that goes there it's not as clear it's not as definitive for us or we may think it is but ultimately we aren't necessarily in alignment with understanding clearly what is needed to be organized or how it can best be organized so um, yeah, Mercury retrograde is definitely going to have us uh, turn within. And, you know, the retrograde planets always have us look within and also challenge us in the sign that they're in. So Capricorn, it's going to be about the structures and the mental structures. So, you know, um, our ideology is really strong about um, dogma. What is it? Why do we do what we do? Why do we hold on to that item? You know, it's tradition. It's what has always been, but why? You know, we need to recognize that a lot of what we keep around our home in our houses that clutter our world, which Capricorn is all about getting rid of clutter, um, that is a reflection of our emotional state and our belief systems. And I do believe a lot of times we don't recognize that our emotions are reflected everywhere. They're reflected in our body, in what we eat, in how we treat people, in how we drive a car. And Mercury and Capricorn, it's about your cars. It's about your bodies. It's about the physical structures in your world. And Mercury is about uh, vehicles and transportation. It's about appliances and small pets. So um, retrograde, you know, like it might not be working that your pet is an indoor-outdoor cat. You might want to make that, um, strictly one or the other. I mean, that kind of thing is going to happen in the beginning of the year. Um, so there's also a square today to Mars, and or excuse me, not today, I apologize, an approaching square to Mars with Mercury, and New Year's Day, it will be just past exact, and throughout the day, or the day before New Year's Eve, it will be exact. So 
um, Mars in Libra, la later degrees, it's kind of about shifting and changing structures of relationships. And, you know, are you going into the new year wanting something other than what you have? And it's going to be a really big time for that. Because Mars is taking action in Libra marriage partnership, it can also be beginning of a new one. But at 28 degrees, generally it's the culmination of ending an old relationship that is not serving you well and deciding what you want to do from there. So let's see. I want to kind of get through this and then go through the year and see what we have coming in. Okay, so Mars, Venus is at two degrees Sagittarius on New Year's Eve. So again, it's about people of other cultures, travel, higher understanding, spirituality, and education. So it's a love of education and a love of learning. And maybe, you know, coming up on Saturn at 11 degrees, it could be a very strong year for you to go back to school or um, something having to do with teaching, uh, either giving or getting education. And Saturn is career, so there could be a, a very strong element. Two elements, travel, well, actually three, travel, education and understanding, including spiritual seeking, and education, let's see, <laughs> I just lost it, education, travel, and health. So those three things are going to be coming in really strong this year, but you'll have desire around taking action on them, which is really good because it's going to make you feel lighter when you do these things. So um, if you're looking for what it is that's going to make you feel better about yourself, understanding something, learning about something, going somewhere to another place, or uh, getting your health in alignment and taking physical action towards it, those three things will really bring you into alignment with the energies for the year and with your life and the structure that you need to make a change with. Okay, so coming up in the new year, I'm just going to run down. I I wrote uh, in the last hour, I wrote a lot of the aspects coming in and it triggered off some different energies coming in. So I'm going to tell you those and then I'm going to go through the signs. And um, you know what? I might take a break here real quick before I get into all this just so I can uh, clear the energy and, you know, maybe just feel a little bit calmer and take it strong out of the gate on the second half of the show. So, oh, I'm just trying to decide what I want to play. Okay, we'll just take a two-minute music break. How about that? Some calm for the new year. Show on Blog Talk Radio. 
and I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida. If you are interested in getting a full reading from me and see what's up in your particular chart for the rest of the year, you can get me at astrologerangel.com. There are links at the top of the page. And true to my nature, I'll probably be renovating that page again soon because it still isn't exactly how I like it. So, I, you know, I don't know. I do a lot of that. I have um, strong Aquarian energy in my chart. And I always like to uh, refresh. And that's really what Aquarius does, is it brings in new, clear energy. It's clear-mindedness and um, inventiveness. So that will be coming in this year as well. Um, it's going to be probably after Valentine's Day. Okay, so January. I'm going to go down some of the aspects, and I'll tell you what it indicates as we go for society. Okay, so January, like I said before, we have uh, Mars moving in. I'm sorry. I hope <laughs> I hope you can. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I'm going to just go over everything again. My name is Shelly Overton, and I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida. You can get me at astrologerangel.com. I have my microphone up. I apologize. Oh, sometimes, I swear. Okay, so anyway, this year, um, Jupiter retrogrades on the 8th from 23 degrees to 13 degrees and goes direct in May. So we have a nice chunk of time where we're going to be really getting into our health and exercise issues and um, connecting to our spiritual side and really kind of um, turning to higher understanding. And because, like I said, Jupiter in Virgo is very clear-mindedness, Jupiter retrograde in Virgo can be more like a Pisces energy, more uh, dreamy and not as capable of taking the action, which is really what Jupiter as well as Virgo want to do. They want to move forward and go and do it. That isn't necessarily um, as a comfortable feeling. So for the first five months, um, when it comes to ideas and spiritual truths, we're going to be a little off. You know, honestly, the Virgo is a perfectionist. It wants to have everything just right and just so. And personally, having four planets in Virgo, I know it, perfectionism can be a disease. Actually, I consider it to be a, an emotional disorder because it takes us away from letting things flow the way they should naturally. So that is one of the lessons we'll learn this year is how to let things flow naturally and not be so uptight about things because that's what uh, Jupiter and Saturn and Sagittarius want us to do. So let's see. We've got um, Mars going into Scorpio on January 4th. Mercury retrogrades January 5th. And so, again, I've already discussed that. We know what's going on there. The sun goes into Aquarius on the 21st of January, bringing in the clear-mindedness. Um, and then the sun will answer to Uranus, and Uranus is direct now. So it's going to be a great time um, mentally to really move forward with a lot of uh, advertising. If you have a company that you're trying to start, advertising, um, marketing, self-promotion, connecting to other people, networking, a uh, really strong time, you know, with the sun moving into conjunction with Uranus. And also, um, it isn't an energy that suffers fools easily. It definitely tends to be uh, Aquarian energy coming up later in January is about um, having almost... <laughs> I said it earlier, I think it's high-mindedness. It's kind of like you're in this position of understanding a greater truth, and those who don't understand it, you don't have any patience for. It's a very quick-minded energy. So we could get into some of that. Um, sun is ego. Ego generally is the self, where Aquarius energy is the the humanitarian overall view so it's an overriding view of everybody's good so when you bring the individual into that realm then you're more likely to have a personal connection to the greater good and to wanting things to be in what's best for the masses so that energy is coming in venus goes into capricorn on the 24th of this coming month and so that means that she's going to want to have her ducks in a row when it comes to structure of 
organizations. Um, it's about wanting to be in that uh, making things happen for your career mode. And earth energy, it's also earth energy and taking care of the body. Again, Venus and Capricorn the 24th. Mercury goes direct on the 25th. So then he can start to move forward, moving again towards Aquarius, which he goes into on Valentine's Day. And then Mars squares Saturn on the 31st. So Mars will be in uh, Sagittarius and Saturn is in Virgo. So they square and that means uh, there's going to be an ideological difference, probably in religions. And I wouldn't be surprised if, to hear something the end of January about um, some type of religious doctrine being challenged again, kind of last year. And I, I know at least a couple came out against um, Scientology. So it's that kind of energy. Again, it's just like uh, truth and restruct, or and excuse me, um, yeah, the, the energy of uh, wanting a higher understanding, but it's not in alignment with your particular views. So Venus, Jupiter on the 17th. So Venus squaring Jupiter is going to be um, ideals at odds with how to take action on it. So look for difficulty there. Um, Venus can also be a romantic partner and that you're not in alignment with their needs and desires. And maybe very likely either education is taking you away or a job is taking you away or there's some difficulty with not being in the same place because of the Jupiter, Jupiter slash Sagittarius influence that you're not going to be on the same uh, page physically, like not in the same space. I don't know why I'm not getting that out well. Okay, I'm um, going to have to run through this a little bit quicker, I think. Mercury goes into Aquarius on Valentine's Day, so it's going to be very mental. It's not going to be as lovey-dovey. Now, Mercury, say, in Libra or Mercury in Pisces or Mercury in, even in Cancer or Taurus would be really lovey for that energy. But Mercury in Aquarius means uh, things like going to see Star Wars, which probably is still going to be in the theaters, would be a really good thing to do. Any kind of science fiction, any kind of science um, educational thing would be good. Um, what else? Eh, we'll talk more about it when we get to that. Venus goes into Aquarius on the 18th, so she's at the last degrees of Capricorn at that time. So she's wanting people to recognize her as the duty per, dutiful person she is. So if you want to really appreciate your partner or mother or whatever, whoever you're giving some love to, those of us who don't necessarily have a partner, um, wherever you're going to show somebody that you care, show them that you appreciate what they're doing for you and the sacrifices they make because that's what Venus is feeling on Valentine's Day. Then she goes into Aquarius and she's off to the races to something else. Um, going into the mind. Mars squares Venus on the 29th. And guess what? It's leap year because it's always leap year on an uh, election year. So February 29th, happy birthday to all those February 29thers who only get a birthday every four years on that day. Um, but Mars squares Venus on that day. So Mars will be where? Mars is going to probably be in Scorpio. Well, you know what? I don't have the chart, so I'm not going to say. I didn't put down what signs they were in. Um, anyway, Mars squares Venus. Never a good thing on the last day of uh, February. So it means that men and women are at odds. And I would say probably that's going to be a big time for political uh, disagreements, men against women. So Hillary against another political figure, probably, or any other man against woman in the public eye. Going into March, Mercury goes into Pisces on the 5th. Venus goes into Pisces on the 12th. Mercury goes into Aries on the 22nd. Mars goes into Sagittarius on the 6th. And so that's going to be another uh, day of the 6th of March. It's going to be another strong energy with looking for new religions or educational settings. Venus in Pisces squares Saturn in Sagittarius on the 25th. So again, spirituality desire. I mean, that's going to be a theme, it seems, ongoing for the first few months, is that um, really challenging where you're at spiritually and is your belief system really getting you what you need? Okay. 
Um, April, we've got Sun in Aries. Mercury goes into Taurus on the 6th, which is the same day Venus goes into Aries. Mars goes in retrograde on the 17th of April and Sagittarius at 8 degrees until June 29th, at which time he'll be in Scorpio. Uh, Pluto goes retrograde on the 18th at 17 degrees Capricorn. So we have until April for Pluto going direct, which I uh, just, you know, some of the larger planets going retrograde always, it, it just, it's like a slow burn <laughs> until it goes direct. Pluto's one of those because I have so much Pluto energy in my chart. Um, so Pluto retrogrades in April, of course, just in time for Taurus. So he's Pluto will retrograde with Sun in Aries. And then it goes into Taurus, but it's at Capricorn. So the Sun will be in Taurus, and that will be trining for the month after that, uh, Pluto. So money systems are going to be uh, not bad, believe it or not. So it'll be about taking on the structure of our money in April. Of course, that's the month we pay our taxes, but come around uh, tax time, Pluto is slowing down to go retrograde in Capricorn. So um, I would honestly say if you don't want to have any issues with your taxes, do it before April. That's my advice um, because Pluto rules the eighth house of taxes. And, of course, Capricorn is the government and the structure, and retrograde means going back over something. So definitely take care of them before April. I will be. Sun goes into Taurus on the 20th, um, which means you are thinking about money. So uh, that's going to be, uh, you know, like when Sun's in Taurus, it's about where can I get my money to make me some more money. And uh, fertile is about the fertility of your money. Mercury retrogrades on the 23rd of April and on the, let's see, until the 28th of May. I believe is what it is. I, you know what? I dictated this, and sometimes it changes my words, so it's confusing a little bit. I apologize. Anyway, Mercury retrogrades at 23 degrees. 20, that's what it is. April 28th it retrogrades. May, Uranus is at 21 degrees, 49 minutes on the 4th, the exact degree of the election chart. This is interesting. So Uranus at 21 degrees and 49 minutes on the 4th of May. So you want to know a very strong energy of what's going on with the election. And the election, and I was going to get to it, but I think I'm going to run out of time here. And I'm going to use the last 15 minutes if I can to take calls. So um, we've got an election chart with Uranus at 21. And I believe, and I wanted to do that too, but I'll probably do it closer to that. Um, you know what? I'm going to jump over. That's where it is. It's down here under November. So on election day, November 8th, the sun is at 15 degrees. And... Um, it's in Scorpio. The moon is in Aquarius at 18, so they're squaring each other. So there's going to be a deep egoic emotional attachment. On, I mean, I don't, I don't like this because the moon and the sun are not on the same page, which means there's going to be a split with everybody that those who are more going with their ego are going to think one way and those who are more with their heart are going in um, – Emotions are going to vote another way. But Mercury is in Scorpio. Venus is in Sagittarius. Mars is in Capricorn. Saturn in Sagittarius and Jupiter in Libra. So there's really strong Sagittarius energy. So it is going to be about foreign affairs. There will be a strong uh, connection to the foreign affairs. But Venus at 25 Sagittarius means there's wrapping up of some of this energy. Mars at 29 Capricorn. So it is kind of a done deal I mean the end degrees I've talked about this before 29 degrees means you've culminated something it's wrapped up it's it's at the end of something so it's letting go it's letting go of an old dynamic of an old ideology so there is I and I think definitely <laughs> we're all kind of tired of nothing happening or you know all the the continuing of the same old people in Congress that kind of thing so I think that there's going to be um a sweeping of the old out. And um, it's kind of like we're going to vote, but in a way, 29 Capricorn, it's going to be hard to believe that it matters. It's almost like that we're going to feel like, well, they're going to do what they're going to do. But Saturn at 15 Sagittarius, it is a rising of um, 
people from other cultures, the minorities, are going to have a big say in this election, I would say. And Jupiter at 12 Libra. So it's expansion of um, trying to cooperate. That's what Jupiter wants to do. And 12 Libra, can you believe it? Boy, it's just flying through. Okay. So you know what I'm going to do because I've been going through all these. I'm going to just go through everything sign by sign real quick and see if I can at least get to a call before the end. So Aries. Aries is going to be feeling a lot of that strong energy towards like don't tell me what to do because of Uranus and the sign again this year. But uh, Saturn and Sagittarius means that you're going to be traveling and expanding what you're going to do with your career to other markets, to other people, and bringing in that energy to your career, into your life, into your job. And you're the salesperson, as you know. So you're going to have uh, a much better time creating the structure with people of other cultures. And um, what did I say here? Let me check real quick. I took my glasses off. Um, there's a lot of strong energy. I've noticed in the chart that there are um, clusters of planets going around that really will affect the month, month to month. Um, like April, you're going to have Sun in Aries, Mercury in Taurus, Venus in Aries. There's a cluster of that really strong, determined energy. So um, April is going to be a strong month for Aries with the energies. Uh, do, 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 do. So let me just look uh, real quick here at Taurus. Taurus, again, you're also going to have a strong month coming up in May with uh, Sun and Mercury in April, too. And let's see, Venus, when does Venus go into... Yeah, so May is going to be strong. Venus in um, positive aspect, to Having ideas to dealing with money. And um, I had a friend recently ask me, she's a Taurus, and she said, when is it going to be good for Taurus? <laughs> so... Taurus usually does better around their birthday, of course, but um, because Venus and Mercury also kind of follow the sun, that it's going to be a good time in April and May for for uh, Taurus. And gosh, see, there's just so much. I probably should have done a two-hour show. There's just so much I, I want to touch on and so much information that makes it a bit difficult to get really specific for each sign. Um, to a, a, Let's just put it this way. The Earth signs watch what Pluto does when it goes retrograde and when it goes direct. And then also when, let me see, hang on, I'm just looking for other uh, indicators. So, well, that's good. Mars is almost out of Libra, which is its square to Taurus. So that helps. Oh, I take it back. It's not. I'm sorry. It's about to square to Taurus because, or oppose, excuse me. So Mars into Scorpio in the month of January is going to oppose Taurus. And so actually, believe it or not, an opposition can actually infuse you with more energy. So the beginning of this year with Mars in Scorpio is going to be strong about earning money and connecting to others and commitment to others on financial matters. So look for the early part of the year to be really strong for Taurus as well. And then again in May. Okay. Okay, Gemini. Geminis are having an interesting year because of Saturn and Sagittarius. Gemini energy is always wanting to be on the go in some capacity. So you are going to be feeling like an even stronger need to go and be active. Of course, I say this all the time on my show because Saturn's in Sagittarius, but it is about taking action. It's about um, about finding out where you're happier. And also, it's going to have a certain amount of connectedness to a partner that you're going to be finding um, whether or not you can connect to a partner. Again, Geminis are going to be about travel this year as well and communication uh, around that education, as they always are, but even more so with Saturn and Sagittarius. Um, you're going to have some issues come in around the partners because of the Pluto and Capricorn. And early in the year, the Sun-Mercury energy is uh, emphasizing father in your chart the father figure and a transition of your thinking or connectedness around your father. So, you know, if you're coming into a Saturn return, so if you're around 28 or 56, then it's going to also be about 
connecting to your partner slash or the parent of the opposite sex. So those are influences for Gemini. And I'm just shooting off the cuff for this. Again, there's just not enough time to get into much more specific. As the year goes on, I will talk more directly and um, we can take the calls as well and get more into what's going on specifically. And I'm also going to write a blog. So if you check back with astrologerangel.com, there's going to be a blog up in the next within the next week about the signs and what to expect more specifically because there just isn't enough time in this hour. Okay, so Cancer is, again, the beginning of the year is going to be dealing with your family, family of origin, your career, your partner, spouse, wrapping up some of those issues. Again, Mercury for the first two months is going to be affecting um, how much you are responsible within the marriage or within a partner. And you're going to be feeling a lot of this energy coming into education, cancers. Uh, you have Jupiter down in the third house of communication and uh, elementary education. So it's also about speaking your truth and getting it out there. And health-wise, um, probably some health issues around smaller things like eating and digestion and what you're putting in your body. That's going to have more emphasis for you this year. Exercise, for sure. Um, Coming up early on, there's some opportunity for love for um, cancers with Mars going into Scorpio in your house of romance. So that's awesome. First couple months. And then going on to Leo. Leos, you are feeling energy in work. You are having to put in a lot of time at work. And you are the leader. And I'm telling you, Capricorn energy in your house of work is just emphasizing that all the more because Capricorn is also a leadership energy. It's about a person who's always available and always responsible. So you're going to be finding there's even more to do at work. And also you're going to be having a raise or a promotion opportunity coming up this year. And let's see. And as far as time, I wish I could give you all the details of every sign, but I just can't. So I'm just giving you the highlights. Um Saturn and romance, Sagittarius, so you're going to be traveling. Um, look for romances, again, far away or with people of other cultures or within an educational setting. And also, don't forget, if you exercise and do yoga or something like that, you can meet people in that kind of environment as well. So education and exercise. Um, Virgos, Virgos being meticulous, um, you're really going to have a bit of a difficult time, again, for the first six months, first five months, again, through May, with Jupiter retrograde, because it means that you're having to, you're going to be a little bit more concerned about money and feeling like everything that was happening for you financially is maybe on hold a little bit, because that retrograde motion, Jupiter's expansion, and when he retrogrades, it kind of pulls in the energy, acts more a little bit more like Saturn. So you're having to trust the Sagittarius energy, and that means faith and um, seeking out what's on the other side, what's what's out there in the realm that you don't understand, because Virgo can be very um, literal and left brain and meticulous about details. It, it, Jupiter is not about the details. So when Jupiter retrogrades too, um, there's going to be issues around detail and the meticulous nature as well as letting go and having faith, okay? So Virgos, it's about work, but it's an expansion of self more so this year um, than other years. And your home and family sector is being affected, and there's some travel going on with that. You can have some opportunities away from home with your career, and music, I keep forgetting to add music into that, Sagittarius rules music. So, um family connectedness around travel and having fun. You know, Saturn can be very unfun, but in Sagittarius, he wants to get to the heart of what makes Sagittarius tick. And what makes Sagittarius tick is freedom and having play. So don't forget to play around the family. Libra, um, it's going to happen for you in the subconscious this year with the Virgo energy and Jupiter. So it's going to be about... Um, your sense of self-worth with how you view your take on this world and and universal issues, things that are about the intangibles. I know that's really vague, but it's psychic awareness and connectedness to health and how you process 
the energy that comes in and, and the information that's there for you to expand your connection to life as a whole. So it's a little bit more touchy-feely, but um, Pluto and Capricorn in the home and family, so it's going to be more issues probably around parents and uh, parents getting older and having to deal with what to do about um, that situation. There are going to be some decisions coming up in the early months for you around that. And then uh, Saturn is in your third house. Again, it's about uh, connectedness to faith and religion for you and the ideologies because it's the third house, which is ideas. Scorpio, you're going to have a strong energy out of the gate with us. Mars going into Scorpio in your first house. So it's going to be about connectedness to others, about commitment. It can be about legalities or the law or politics, anything. If you're thinking of taking action uh, based on any kind of research project and psychology, that's going to be strong for you. Money house, Saturn's in your money house, teaching you how to have faith and connect to a, a higher truth. You've got Pluto in your third house this year with the Mercury energy early on, um, having you take some ownership over uh, the words that you say. And so that could be a book, you know, try writing it down and getting it published. Sagittarius, Saturn in the first, Neptune in the fourth for you. So you're ending up having, again, it's a spiritual side, but it's around family. It's around um, what you really want to do in who you are and um, are you where you want to be? Are you thinking of moving? There's a stronger connection somewhere else probably that makes you feel like this is where you should be in your truth. Uh, Capricorn, we've got a strong, again, dealing with the fears and the sense of self and change and moving on to a new you. Um, the first two months, you're going to have to go back over some of these fears. But again, by March, it's going to start loosening up. You're going to be brighter and happier. Aquarius, um, really nailing down those ideas about what you want to do, um, the structure of who you are, but know that it's going to be changing coming up um, in the next few years, but definitely uh, later on this year. And again, I don't have the dates. I wish I could. I've got 90 seconds for the show. Um, so Aquarius, your issues are going to revolve around uh, speaking your truth, taking action on maybe a new endeavor around education, and um, nailing down your um, your fears, internal fears, and then also expansion of health around a partner or a parent. And then uh, Pisces. Pisces, your issues are going to be within uh, expansion of taking ownership of humanitarian causes and helping others, especially the elderly. And also your career could take you somewhere else with Saturn in Sagittarius. Um, Venus is there the early part of the year. So Venus coming up on Saturn in Sagittarius. You have opportunities in other areas. I apologize for not taking calls this week, but I will take them next week. And I want to thank you for listening to the show. If you have any opportunity, go to iTunes and give this a um, uh, review and that would be greatly um, helpful Helpful, and I wish you the happiest New Year's. Be safe and we'll see you in 2016. Bye! Thanks for stopping by Astro Energy this week. If you would like to get a hold of Shelley Overton, you can get her at astrologerangel.com on Facebook at Astro Energy or Astrologer Angel. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com with additional music by Ironwood Rain. Check them out on the net at ironwoodrain.com.